Hey there, youth and youth families, and welcome back to this time of table talk where we are talking about meditation. Yesterday, we talked about embracing the silence, and I just wanted to recap that again, that the goal of silence isn't necessarily about actual physical silence, but it's about taking time to be free of distraction and create some space for God to speak in our lives. You know, just as a bit of a sideline, you know, the, we often make the mistake in thinking that life is all about us. And so we fill our lives up with all kinds of things that we feel are really important. And we get really busy in life and our lives become really noisy. The reality is that our lives are all about God. So it makes sense that when our lives are filled with too much noise, we often feel dissatisfied and that something important is missing. And that's why meditation is so important. Meditation is kind of our way back from this point to create a little bit more silence, a little bit more space for God to speak to us in our lives and redirect our priorities and, and fill those tanks like we talked about yesterday. One of the goals that we have in this time in meditating on God is to acknowledge that our, our lives are not about us, but they are all about him. So let's talk a little bit today about focusing our thoughts as we meditate. If you are anything like me, you might struggle with a couple challenges and these are the ones that I struggle with in terms of focusing my thoughts as I meditate. The first one is that wrong thoughts often plague my mind. Things like doubts, you know, does God actually want to connect with me? Or insecurities, am I actually worth the effort that I put into some of these things? Or, or distractions, things like problems or conflicts that might be in my life. Sometimes these wrong thoughts actually dominate my headspace and it makes it hard for me to feel connected to God as I meditate. So if this is a challenge for you, I want to encourage you, don't worry, you are completely normal. Second challenge is that my thoughts are fleeting and I am so easily distracted, especially when silence enters the room and my thoughts bounce from thing to thing and I find it really hard to stay focused. Again, if this describes you, you are normal and, um, and I just wanna offer you some encouragement. All of this will improve with practice and consistency but it doesn't always happen instantly. So you have to give yourself some time and you have to give yourself some grace, okay? Try to feel free to try different things. You know, my way doesn't work for everyone. So ask your leader what they would do. You know, maybe get a book or, or talk to your parents about how do they connect to, time, to God in their times of meditation. Here's the thing that you should know about your thoughts is the more that you practice a way of thinking, the more ingrained it becomes. It makes me think about uh, a picture here. Um, my wife built a ice rink in our backyard and it's fantastic. Um, I remember watching when she was flooding it and she put the hose out there and if the hose was laying on the ice, the, the movement of the water would wear grooves in the ice and it would direct the path of where the water would go. And um, our thoughts are a lot like that. The more that we wear on a particular way of thinking, the more natural it becomes that all of our thoughts would kind of follow that way of thinking. So in, with that in mind, we wanna become more conscious of the ways that we're thinking and making sure that the ways, the path that, that our thoughts are taking are a positive and a God-centered sort of way of thinking. Whenever you notice that your thoughts are in a, inaccurate, you know, simply pause and I take a deep breath and take inventory and remind yourself of truth, the things that the Bible says, and then continue on. You might need to do this practice over and over and over again, and that is okay because we are wearing new grooves in the ice when we do that. You know, um, it might take time for this all to catch on. And I think that Paul gives us some really good words in Philippians chapter four that really help us in thinking about building good paths for our thoughts. So let me read them for you here. Philippians chapter four, verses four 
on to verse 9. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. It's good to start from a positive angle of thinking, isn't it? I, I will say it again, rejoice. Must be important. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, worthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. So I just hear him saying that this is a continual process to focus on these things. Take inventory when you notice that things go a little sideways. Don't worry. Take a breath. You know, give yourself some grace. But just get back on track. And that is what the process of meditation is all about, is wearing those new grooves in our thought patterns. Finally, instead of just thinking about meditation as strictly a practical thing, a thing that we do, the mechanics of it, like I've explained, I want you to think about meditation as also being a relational thing. It's connecting with God and he has his own timing in terms of how he connects with us. So you might need to exercise some patience because he might be curious. Are you willing to wait? Or are you willing to continue and try even though you might fail from time to time? You know, take that passage, Philippians chapter 4, and why don't you go back to it and study it again, and have a very blessed day.